Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back. So we have a question for you, real estate agents. Are you on track or are you falling behind? Take this test to find out. So what we're going to be doing on today's podcast, which is, by the way, motivated as always by one of our fantastic listeners or coaching clients or all the above. Mm -hmm. Um, And we are going to be presenting to you information that is, again, designed to get you uh, motivated, get you educated, and then hopefully get you into action. That's right. So are you on track to crush it in real estate? Are you struggling to get by or headed towards becoming another statistic? Today's podcast will help you find out. And this is an episode inspired by a recent premier coaching session that received overwhelming feedback. Agents left the session with a clear sense of direction, knowing exactly what they needed to work on to level up their business. So we decided to share that same experience with you. We should mention, Julie, before we get too far into this, thank you for all of you who were expressing concerns about the fact you knew we were in North Carolina. We come here every year for this time, and we have a little cabin up in the Smoky Mountains. And um, thankfully, we were 100%, you know, the the cabin where we are, nothing was adversely affected by the hurricane, but not just two hours north of us, complete devastation. And obviously, we're, you know, participating in as many things as we can to help those folks out. But yeah, so thank you for all of you who reached out and showing your concern for uh, Julie and I and our family. Everybody is great. And again, thank you very much. Yes. And uh, as a matter of fact, if you're one of our coaching clients that goes to our regular private Facebook page for our coaching clients, I did post different ways that they can contribute to disaster relief. Yeah. And it's the real deal up there too. The news isn't even encapsulating the devastation that's been happening up there. Terrible. I'm sure most of you are following all of it on socials, but it's just extraordinary. You know, just, it is absolutely horrible what's happening. If you're a podcast listener or a coaching client, um, or someone from our EXP family and you're, you know, suffering from all of that, do know that our heart are that our, you know, our hearts and our prayers are with you. And if you need any help, there are certainly a lot of charities and different things you can turn to. I am uh, really impressed by all the, um, frankly, all the outpouring. Yeah. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. Me too. You know, it's like no one's waiting around for the government to save their bacon. Nope. Local churches and, you know, just community groups are just all gathering, you know, mm-hmm. like, well, I mean, just on a grand scale, what Elon Musk sent, how many? <laughs> Uh, hundreds h- hundreds of Starlink units, yes, uh, to the area. So people can communicate with each other, and, and a lot of that's just letting your family know that you're okay. Also, uh, if you are a licensed North Carolina agent, I believe that the state association has put together what uh, licensed realtors can do for their community, being that we are talking about houses here, a lot of houses that have really been damaged or destroyed. Yeah, and that would be a perfect, or rather this is a perfect time to, if you are in that neck of the woods in North Carolina, it is a perfect time for you to call your centers of influence and past clients. Um, not all of them are going to be living there full time and do give them some, uh, you know, suggestions on what they might do if the house is, if their property is uh, damaged by storms and have at the ready, all the emergency phone numbers and all the rest of it. But it's markets like, or rather it's, you know, it's times like this where we all have to remember that our highest and truest purpose on this planet is being of service to other people. And if you are in that market, if you are selling real estate and if, you know, your market was adversely affected by it, do reach out and do try to be the change agent agent to bring some calm to some folks. Don't be surprised if a lot of people do lack a lot of uh, direction right now because nothing like this has ever happened before, certainly in North Carolina. It's absolutely incredible that a hurricane of all things goes that far inland in the United States. And, and smacks a mountain town like that. Yeah, it, it just doesn't even make sense, you yeah. know. And uh, our where we are, we're in Murphy, North Carolina, which is right on the edge of Tennessee. The eye of the storm, we weren't here. We, were, we came like a day and a half later. But the eye of the storm was right over Murphy. And our neighbors said that we were outside. They could actually see the rotation of the hurricane as it you know went That's over Murphy. Crazy. It's just, it's ridiculous. It is really <laughs> you know, It weird. just is. Yeah, that's I'm, right. I'm going to file a complaint. <laughs> Hurricane, <laughs> no hurricanes as far north. What Hurricane are you zero stars. <laughs> zero stars. All right. So let's get <laughs> back recommend. into this. Let's focus. Okay. So back to real estate world. While we cannot dive as deep as we do in coaching, we're going to provide you with 25 critical questions to help you score yourself and your skills and drill down. Your answers will reveal whether you are on track and show you which areas need improvement. So There are only yes or no answers. Yes answers, these represent your strengths. Keep pushing and elevate your performance in those areas. 
No answers. Well, you're going to probably have several. That would be normal. Identify the top three areas where you can make the biggest improvements this quarter, month, or week, or even today. Now, note to self, if your answer is sometimes or not always, that still counts as a no. And it's time to get real about your business with regards to whatever you're saying only sometimes or in certain situations. So now if you're going to want these notes, and again, we designed this material so that you can uh, print it off, download it, maybe, you know, just use it for yourself or use it for social media, use it for training your coaches, uh, your coaches, use it for training. You can tell what I'm thinking about. Use it for training your uh, team or, you know, your brokerage or whatever it is. But if you want this information, it is free. It's available for you at any time, but you have to be a subscriber to our newsletter. Oh, I didn't tell you. What? So we hired somebody new to run the newsletter Mm -hmm. and the facelift it's gotten is extraordinary. Yeah. I'm so proud of it. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't realize how much customization wasn't being done, Uh uh, you know, by our, um, you know, by our staff. And I don't think they knew what they could do. They didn't know what they didn't know. Right. Exactly. Anyway. So this new person is just, Josh is his name, is doing a phenomenal job. Yeah. So if you want to subscribe to the newsletter, it's free. You can get the notes for any of our past podcasts. And all you have to do is go to Harris Real Estate Daily. Daily.com. Harris Real Estate Daily.com is our daily newsletter. It features our notes from that day's podcast as well as the podcast. So what you're going to do is you're going to get the podcast and the notes sent to you every single day. Does not cost you a cent. You definitely want this information. And we are starting to include more um, information that's just available for the newsletter subscribers. Just go to Harris Real Estate Daily.com and just subscribe. Very simple. All right. So back to our yes or no questions. Yes, is you do it all of the time. You have a high level of skill. No, you're going to answer, even if it's just, you know, not always. So uh, some of these we'll discuss. Some of them will make sure that they understand why they're so important and other ones kind of stand on their own. So we'll go through these slowly and you just write, uh, you know, essentially keep track of how many times you say yes and how many times you say no. And at the end of uh, how many questions is it, Jules? There are 25. 25 questions. Then you'll be able to score yourself. All right, I'll do the first one. Okay. All right, so are at least 50% of your past 10 transactions listings? And we're not going to be coaching or training or, you know, bloviating on these points. You guys listen to our podcast long enough, you know what our stance on that is. But the very first question is very simple. Are at least 50% of your past 10 transactions, adjust accordingly, um, you know, listings? Number Question number two, Julie Harris. Number two, do you know what your magic number is? The do only you- ones of you who can, who can confidently say, I have no idea is if you just got your license and this is the first time you've heard our podcast. Well, so how do they know what the magic number is? Um, You have to be a uh, member of Premier Coaching and you can get the magic number formula, which is part of the real estate treasure map for free. We have done some past podcasts on this, but to get the whole, it's called the real estate treasure map. It is our downloadable 62 page uh, fill in the blank business and life plan. It's absolutely 100% a perfect roadmap, a blueprint that you'll uh, create for yourself for the next 12 months. Just simply go to, again, just join Premier Coaching. Uh, Just go to premiercoaching.com or text the word Premier to 47372. Again, text the word Premier and you spell Premier Julie Harris? P-R-E-M-I-E-R. That's right. To 47372 or you just go to premiercoaching.com. You do get the first 30 days for Premier Coaching for free. And yes, that does include um, a daily semi-private coaching call. And obviously there's a lot of downloaded, uh, downloadable material, including the real estate treasure map. So get that right away. And inside of the real estate treasure map, you will self-discover where your real estate magic number is. If you don't know what it even what that term means, then that is a no for you on question number two. Question number three, Julie Harris. Number three, and this is a bit of a trick question. Do you (laughs) have and use a pre-listing package? Now, if you have it, but you're afraid to use it, or you only use it now and then, this is still a no. So do you have and also use your pre-listing package? Now, what is a pre-listing package? It's something that you send prior to going on a listing appointment that acts as your silent salesperson, which when used correctly and used, uh, frankly, using our pre-listing package that we've created for you, that's part of Premier Coaching, it'll essentially do all the selling for you. So by the time you get at the seller's house, there's not going to be a lot of uh, stress uh, in the situation. So what a seller wants the least and what you want the least is a bunch of, frankly, stressful questions about, you know, whether they should hire you. Like, how are you going to answer the question? You know, I'm interviewing you and uh, versus, you know, two or three other agents. And all of you guys seem great, but why am I going to hire you over the others? So-and-so decided, you know, suggested that they list my house for this very low percent. And you're asking this percent. Why are you worth more than they're worth? What happens if the house doesn't sell? What All these things, right? So the pre-listing pack is literally a silent salesperson that you send out ahead of time. It's 19 pages. We've, you know, these 
these uh, pre-listing packs have been tested to work in every market, every market situation, every price range, whether the interest rates are up or down, whether the inventory is up or down. This is the silent salesperson, frankly, the secret knockout punch that you want to have when you're a listing agent. If for no other reason, it's going to save you massive amounts of times on a listing appointment. When they read the pre-listing pack, when you've sent it ahead of time and you're using our you know, prescribed pre-listing pack, the listing appointment itself is very simple when they've read it because pretty much there's zero chance that anyone else you're competing against, unless they happen to also be one of our coaching clients, it's going to, well, even then they don't always use right. it consistently mm -hmm. to Julie's point. But yeah, in that situation, you're going to take that listing because you will have essentially knocked out your comp your competitors and you'll be standing above the crowd. This is true even if you're a brand new agent. So again, that's part of Premier Coaching. Go to premiercoaching.com or just text the word Premier to 47372. Number four, Julie. Do you use an organized CRM with updated contact information for past clients and your sphere of influence? We often get asked, what is the best CRM to use? And the answer is the one that you will use. Some of them are super complicated. Some of them are not. Some of you have brokers that pay for them and some of you don't. So it, the important thing is de dedicate yourself to something. Use the same one every time. Right. That's really the bottom line. CRMs have gotten so much simpler, but they're also kind of overlapping in what they provide. The, I hear a lot of good things about follow-up boss. I hear a lot of good yes. things about some of these others. Whichever one you're going to use at the end of the day, I'll give you a, you know, a pro tip. If you've got fewer than like, I mean, don't be spending a lot of money on uh, CRMs unless you've been in the business for a long time and you've got a good number of clients you have to keep track of. Just do yourself a favor, save some money and just use paper or use index cards. You know, I know this sounds like, oh my gosh, guys, what are you talking about? Index cards. You can literally create your own little CRM by just taking some three by five cards, putting them in a little box and writing down what all the client's names are, the name, address, phone number, dog's name, all the rest of it, and then mark on the three by five card every time you call them. We, you know, And you're gonna be calling them on a regular basis. So if you don't have a bunch of past clients and you're not wanting to necessarily spend hundreds of dollars sometimes. And learn a new system too. Exactly. You know. Just you know, use that little cheat code and uh, accomplish the same goal for virtually no money. That's right. Do, I mean, do what works. Doing even old school paper three by five cards is better than not doing it at all for sure. Well, we're giving you permission to ignore all the people that are trying to basically blow you know, it, all this, you got to get a CRM. You're in the real estate business. You got to get a CRM. CRM is everything. Yeah. Well, a CRM has value. But you don't have to spend that much money on it when you're getting started, if any money at all. And eventually, as your business scales up, then get a CRM, but get yeah. one you're actually going to use. One that's simple. You know, some of them you have to click 17 times to send an email out. You know, you don't well, need something I mean, that complicated. Like EX, EXP Realty has got a great one. KB Core. Uh, that, well, KB Core, and there's some others that, but anyway, they're free with, mm -hmm. you know, EXP. So that's, I like that one the best. Yeah, me too. And do the training on it because it's pretty easy. But again, even if you're getting a free CRM and you don't have a, don't spend a whole hell of a lot of time trying to, learn it until you have a bunch of clients. What we're trying to say ultimately is that you have a limited amount of time every day where you're going to work. And during that work time, you have a limited amount of time where you're really going to be frosty, where you're really going to be top of the game. And when that happens, we want you spending that time doing proactive lead generation, which leads perfectly to point number five. That's question right. Question number five. Question number five. Do you actually talk to at least three people from your database each day about real estate? That is not leaving messages. That is not texting them. That is real conversations. Most of my private coaching clients is more like five to 10 per day, but start with a minimum standard. If you're not used to doing it, at least three people per day from your database. So if you're trying to decide how to allocate your time in your real estate <laughs> treasure map, uh, says that you should be making five or 10 contacts a day and you're trying to decide, should I be spending my time scaling up my CRM or making those 10 contacts? I think every one of you know that the answer is make the contacts, right? A hundred percent make the contacts. That's right. Number six. Do you spend at least 80% of each workday on, <clears throat> excuse me, proactive lead generation? What's the difference between proactive and passive? Proactive is having actual conversations with decision-making adults. We call that a contact versus something passive, which would be maybe fun and worth doing, but isn't really proactive. That would be like, you know, putting a video out there and waiting for people to see it and respond to it. And then that didn't get you any response. So you do another one tomorrow. We're talking about proactively talking to people who are actually likely to transact with you. Well, so let's just be clear. The passive, the social media, making the all the stuff, 
all the things, it does work at, at reinforcing the proactive lead generation. So if you're going to be, for example, calling your centers of influence and past clients, if you're going to be calling into a particular neighborhood, why don't you load, why don't you do social media campaigns around your proactive lead generation? So if you've got a, a CRM and let's say you have 300 people in it, why don't you target your social specifically to those people? And you can target your campaigns that way. And they get on the phone and start calling them. And whatever is, you know, updated CMAs, opportunities to, have, you know, suggestions on how they can have their property tax reassessed. If you're in North Carolina, maybe some information on what to do about storm damage. You guys get it. But don't just assume the social media is going to win the day. And here's the simple answer as to why. Because everybody does it because it's the easy button because it requires virtually no skill and there's no rejection for the most part, right? So if you're going to really want to be successful in this business, you want to spend 80% of your workday on proactive lead generation, picking up the phone, doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. You're looking for listings, right? Why don't you call some expireds? You're looking for listings, right? Well, there's some for sale by owners. There's the notice of defaults in some markets. Not very many, but there are some. There's the you know probate listings. And in uh, Premier Coaching, we teach you up to 20 different ways to, uh, for free, by the way, we're not suggesting you buy leads, to go into the marketplace and call the actual owners of actual homes that have their homes actually for sale and offer them your services. Use your pre-listing pack. Follow our seven-step listing process. That is what we're suggesting that you do. 80% of the time, because that's when it's going to put you in a position to help people and make the most money the quickest. All right. Number seven and eight are both about open houses, but slightly different. Number seven, do you have an open house system that generates at least two closable leads per event? That would demonstrate that you have a systematic approach. Now we've done lots of podcasts on this and we talk about it all the time in premier coaching. So no excuses there. Number eight, do you close at least six transactions a year from your open house system, not just creating the leads, but actually getting results and closing and getting paid because you've helped people. Premier coaching clients, I forget what level it's in, but make sure you're downloading the complete open house system. We have coaching clients now who are making, in some cases, you know, millions of dollars, yes. depending on their average uh, commission, doing open houses and centers of influence and past clients. So they're doing kind of the easy work of proactive lead generation, but the point is they're doing the work. You know, it's a, that's the bottom line. They're not, they don't want to call the expired to the for sale by owners, the higher skilled activities. And they were able to hit all their goals, exceed all of them being of service to other people. And uh, frankly, making a lot of money by just doing open houses and by uh, working their centers of influence and past clients. So you don't have to jump in the deep end when you're a premier coaching client. We can show you the, frankly, the less lower skilled stuff. And if your markets uh, offers it, you can do extremely well. Absolutely. hundred percent. We have so many examples of that. All right. Number nine, are you confident in your ability to accurately price listings? Now, proof would be how quickly you're selling your listings. It would also be if you're able to get a logical price adjustment in some cases. I think accurately pricing in the first place is the real skill there. And I have to say, Tim, this is one of those things that has been cropping up more and more lately is accurate pricing because there are still agents as well as sellers who think that the level of appreciation that we got during the pandemic has gone on for two more years. For sure. This is the hardest time of year it to is. accurately price a house. It for is. sure. Because mm -hmm. the nature of the activity changes, there's less competition, which you would, you know, there's fewer buyers, but here's a little secret. The buyers that are out in the marketplace are generally speaking the best buyers for all kinds of different reasons. But really, this time of year, you should be studying, have your MLS send you every single day, essentially a very drilled down market specific CMA in essence, so you can know exactly what's happening. And don't be surprised and don't overreact if you see downward pricing pressure. It's the time of year, you know, but there's still, you're going to see the list to sell price ratio sometimes increases once the properties are priced correctly. Just know your, you know, like I said, know your market, like the back of your hand, that is the first most important skill you need to have as a real estate practitioner. Imagine a doctor that didn't know actually what the hell he was doing. That's you without knowing mark, having market knowledge. Yes. And we, we have done dedicated podcasts about that, where we talk about previewing. You mentioned the daily hot sheet from your MLS, doing practice CMAs, just getting out there more. There's a lot to pricing. You used to be able to just throw it out there when you were the only thing on the market and there were 20 buyers that wanted it. The buyers would decide what the price would be between that and the seller choosing an offer. So pricing has become more specific. Remember, you're supposed to be answering yes or no to each of these questions and keeping tally of how often you said yes or no. And you, of course, can download all of our notes 
uh, from harrisrealestatedaily.com. Once you become a subscriber, or if you're already a subscriber, um, as thousands of you are, something like 30,000 of you are, well then, good for you. You're gonna get our notes sent to you later today. All right, Julie, the next ones are fairly easy to explain. All right, number 10, yes or no. Do you maintain professional profiles on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram at the least? The list goes on. Professional means that they're consistent. They have the same look and feel. The picture on there and the videos actually look like you. It's regularly updated. You don't have shadow profiles or, you know, things that I find on there that haven't been updated in two years. Well, so specifically, you're also going to want to include X or Twitter, and you're going to want to probably include TikTok, things like that. So what is a professional profile? You, here's what everyone's going to do. So let's say you proactively lead generate to an expired listing. You set a listing appointment. You even send your pre-listing pack. You follow our seven steps. Uh, you know, process exactly. Well, that owner is going to go online and they're going to do a little bit of research on you. Don't you do research on everyone, right? Prior to meeting with you, you set the appointment for today at six o'clock, you're headed out. You've done all the things. You're absolutely 100% on track to catch the, uh, to take the listing. But it turns out there's something that you put up on, let's say for example, you know, X and you put it up there six months ago and you were trying to be funny or irreverent, but that particular thing, maybe the seller construes as being a little bit off color or overly political or whatever. And because you are not being professional, you are now going to talk yourself out of getting that listing. They're not necessarily going to tell you that it's because the, you said something on one of the socials or reacted to something on one of the socials. Uh, they're not going to say that's what turned them off, turned them off uh, towards you, but you're just not going to take the listing. So just keep that in mind. True. You And also, as far as politics goes, be a Republicrat. Be both. You don't have to take sides. It's not relevant to the transaction. It isn't. Now, I know some of you, um, and I think, yeah, I agree. In some markets where everything is blue or everything is red, if you're, you know, you, you can still walk the middle, but some of you actually do quite well, you know, waving your red flag or your blue flag in your particular markets, and that does attract business to you. But just adjust accordingly. Because that, that's not a universal fact. There's no. a lot of areas that are purple, and since you don't know, you know, keep it out of the well, transaction. Well, here in Murphy, North Carolina, yeah. you see people coexisting, believe it or not, you know, being <laughs> know. being on either side of the aisle, right? I mean, we were at a we went to the camp, the John Campbell School, the folk school the folk today. Folk school, yeah. Yeah, for it's awesome. it, 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 pictures are on uh, Instagram if you want to see them. Um, anyway, so there were people walking around with, you know, made, make America great hat, red hats. And there are people walking around with Kamala Harris things. And guess what? They were talking and shaking hands and being friendly to each other. They were. So you try to be a little bit of both. That's what our suggestion is. And to Julie's point, that's what's relevant for most of the country. All right. Number 11. Do you ask, this is a script. Who do you know who could use my help buying or selling real estate at least twice daily? Do you actually use that script? If you don't, say it 10 times right now, write it down and start using it. You might be surprised at the answers you get. The added hook to that is at the end of every single conversation, say, oh, by the way, Julie, whom do you know who's thinking about buying or selling real estate in this market that I should be helping? Or if you want to advance player points on this one, oh, by the way, Julie, who are the two or three people that you can think of that I should be helping buy or sell real estate in this market? Or drill down if you want listings, who are the two or three people you can think of who are thinking about selling their homes that I should be helping? You guys get it? Now, if you ask that question 50% of the time at, at, your end, at the end of every conversation, don't you think if you do it consistently, you're going to start generating referrals? Of course you are. And if they say no, which most of them are going to say no, say, well, I would really appreciate it if you'd keep me in mind. And then if you say enough times, you're going to essentially start building this, you know, mental, emotional um, labyrinth, labyrinth, labyrinth. Yes. Thank you. In their minds yeah. where they are going to think of you because you tripped over that same person at the grocery store, mm -hmm. you know, as you're picking out, you know, ears of corn or whatever, you saw them two weeks in a row. You always end the conversation with a nice little, you know, Oh, by the way, who do you know? And they're going to start thinking of you and they're going to really respect the fact that you are focused on being of service, trying to help other people. Remember the question was, who are the two or three people that you can think of now, that's a little NLP direct command, who are thinking about selling their home that I should be helping this market? Oh, I don't know anybody, Julie. Well, I appreciate that. So if you happen to come across anybody, I sure appreciate if you keep me in mind. Well, I'll do it. And they will. They will. <laughs> Absolutely. Our coaching clients attest to that, but you have to actually ask for the business. All right. Number 12, do you have clear goals in five key areas of life visible where you can see them daily? These are goals that we teach in the treasure map. We teach in regular coaching, physical, financial, mental or spiritual, educational, and family. Now, why is that important? Because you need to know what real estate is there to give you and your family. If you don't have clear goals, then you're going to be one of these agents that's just waiting around for real estate to happen to you. 
I see this posted all the time on the realtor social media. I've been in real estate for six months. I did a deal right away, but I haven't had any more deals in the past five months. I saw one uh, last week they had their car repossessed, right? So at what point are you going to set some goals and, and say, you know what? Real estate is supposed to pay me $10,000 per month. The average commission in my area is $10,000 per month. Thus, I need to be doing one deal per month so that I can meet or exceed those goals at the very basic level. Well, here are the cold hard facts. There's 1.5 or 6 million agents, or I'm sorry, members of the National Association of Realtors. There's more real, there's more folks with real estate licenses that aren't members of National Association. For example, commercial agents aren't members of National Association for the most part. So, you know, they're you know, probably, if you add in all licensees, yeah. the number's around 2.2, 2.3 million. But let's just focus on NAR members. So the 1.15 or, or 1.55 or whatever mm -hmm. it is, half of them haven't sold a house in the last 12 months, right? And then that's kind of been true consistently for the last you know, over 20 years. But then when you look at how the transactions are actually dispersed beyond that, there are very few people that are selling most of the houses. Again, True. this is normal, but normally it's been like 90, you know, like 90% sell either some or none and then 10% sell most of them. But now it's like kind of like 2%, 98%. Now, why is that happening? I'll tell you, it's very obvious. It's because agents are coming into the business or they've been in the business for, like if you've been in the business for 15 years or so, you're a great disadvantage because you've been in the business during this time. And I mean that sort of, you know, as a double-edged sword. You're, you're an advantage. You're advantaged because you come in the era of buying leads in social media and all this branding stuff. But you're also at a disadvantage because you've never really, no one's really pressed you to actually be a proactive lead generator. So what's actually happened over time, and this is kind of counterintuitive, but it is true, is that as everyone has gotten real estate licenses. And there are a lot of them. They're all doing the same thing. They're all doing the social media. They're all trying to be the mayors of their town. They're all sending the emails. They're all doing the TikTok videos. They're all doing kind of all competing for the same eyeballs. And we know, you know, that most of those platforms um, they're very, very, the, the, it's the TikTok generation, the short form media. So now somehow you get into real estate and you're deciding that you're supposed to be a social media influencer and master the 30 second video. That is not easy, especially if you're expecting to actually generate leads from it. And if you look at the demographics of the people that are actually watching these videos, these probably are not buyers and sellers. Why am I telling you all this? If you want to have the unfair advantage in the marketplace, do what other people don't know they should be doing and never learned how to do, and that's the proactive lead generation. Now, Julie and I have been coaching and training agents for, um, you know, prior to all this. You couldn't buy leads like you can now. Uh, like buying leads through Zillow didn't start happening until 2007, and then there were billions of other companies that started copying them in their own form. Well, prior to that, if you wanted to actually generate business, you actually had to be a proactive lead generator, and you had to be really good at it. But now, again, if you've only been in the business since 2008, let's say, you've probably never even been exposed to the things that we teach you how to do in Premier Coaching. So if you want to know why so few agents are succeeding, even marginally succeeding, it's because they're doing what everyone else is doing in the social media and the messaging that, you know, all that is oversaturated. So if you're struggling in real estate or if you don't want to struggle in real estate, an idea would be to do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level and do what other people aren't doing. Go to the end of the pond where there's the fewest hooks in the water, where there's you know where all the fish are smart enough to swim to. You following me on all this? Doesn't this just feel intuitive? Now again, the social media, the passive lead generation, you know that stuff does have a place, but it's designed or should be used to reinforce the proactive lead generation. The money is always going to be in the in the pockets of the agents that are willing to do the real work of real estate, which is having direct, meaningful conversations with decision-making adults about buying or selling real estate. Point number, or question number 13. Number 13, yes or no. Do you use whiteboards to track your business visually? All of our coaching members know this. My coaching clients send me a picture of that prior to every coaching call. Why does it have to be visual? Because when you use it, and of course you can do a spreadsheet as well, but when you're only doing that, it becomes out of sight, out of mind. And here's the proof. Right now I'm going to ask a question. Have you ever forgotten about a lead two or three <laughs> days later and gone, oh my gosh, I should have called that person. Where did I put that piece of paper? Oh, it's a sticky note in my purse. Oh gosh, I wrote it down in somebody else's office. This is why you've got to track everything you're doing. We have a very specific way that we coach you to do that in Premier Coaching. Well, also it's a real visual accountability to yourself. You know, the whiteboards, Julie's talking about leads, but the way we prescribe you to set these up, and again, you'll get this in the first level of Premier Coaching, just go to premiercoaching.com and sign up. 
but the visual is essentially you're going to walk into your office and there's going to be two whiteboards on your wall. You could have a third for leads like Julia's suggesting, but one is going to be the number of active listings you have. And the other is going to be the number of closings you've had and buy, you know, when you're, you permanently, so for example, your goal is to sell 25 houses in, you know, the next 12 months or whatever. So on the closings board, you're actually going to write in permanent markers. So it won't get erased one through 25. And you're going to write at the top closings. And then the other board, you're going to write listings. And let's say, you know, cause you've done the real estate treasure map. You need to have, let's say five listings at all times. Well, you're going to overcorrect. You're going to write one through seven. And that's where you're going to write your listings down. Get the visualization here. Every time you walk into your office, if you know you're supposed to close 50 deals in order to accomplish all your goals and you're looking at your dry erase board or rather it's staring back at you, you know, that'd be funny <laughs> if you drew eyes on your dry erase you board, you feel like you're getting right. So I'm watching if, you. it's watching you. So you walk in your office and you're seeing, you know, one through 50 and you're like, you know, maybe you had three closings and you're having a great day. Well, do celebrate that. But remember, <laughs> by looking at your board, you're still like 14 shy from accomplishing your goal. You get the visualization. Well, it's accountability, really. Exactly. So this is visual accountability that you can't hide from. And psychologically, if so for example, if you are plateaued in your business and you, you know, only selling 25 houses for that past five or six years, this little psychological trick really does work. Just do what we just suggested with the dry erase boards. And if you're stuck at 25 or stuck at five or stuck at 100, go and add 25%. So 100 goes to 125, do a dry erase board. And that actually is going to have a, a positive impact on your complacency because you've proven your ability to be very consistent gener doing the work, uh, generating the leads to sell that many homes per year. But now you need to, if you want to amp it up, maybe you want to work on your savings, you want to pay off debt, you want to do whatever you're going to do. Well, that's a great way, a first step in, in creating that visual accountability. And it's very, very powerful. It is. It tells you exactly what you need to do. It, it is literally a wall that is at a glance. So let's say that you just had five listings. Go you. That's fantastic. But now they're all in contract. So now your listing board is clean. It's gone. You know, it's, there's white space, but your pending board is full of closings. That's great. But when you walk into your office, you see all that white space and all of your listings are now gone. It, it literally tells you what to do. And what some of our clients will do on their pending board, you know, the, or the closings board, right? You can write something, the buyers you write with blue, uh, you know, dry erase and red for sellers uh, after they've actually closed. You can even put them up there while they're pending, but just make sure you denote them as being pending. And then if along the way you want to reward yourself with different things from your dream board, mm -hmm. you just say, okay, now when I've hit, you know, house number 10, I have earned enough money that I'm going to build a huge deck behind my house, or I'm going to, you know, at house 20, I know how much money I've earned. Now I'm actually going to find, buy that cabin on the lake. So do build in those things so you can see if that's what motivates you. Some of you might not be motivated that way. Maybe it's just paying off debt. Maybe it's building savings. Maybe it's donating money, whatever it is. But have that so you can see what you're working towards at all times. It's very, very simple, but incredibly powerful. All right. And for that reason, we do have question number 14. Are you involved in coaching? What we just gave you five minutes of about tracking your, you know, everything visually, that's a very specific uh, technique that we do teach in coaching. We just gave you a little snippet of that. We give you a lot of examples and a lot of strategy to that in actual coaching. And that's just one thing. So well, what is a coach? Like when you, if you guys are doing crazy things like we are, where you're swinging kettlebells, like, uh, we, you know, there's a mirror there, right? When you go to work out, there's a mirror. Why is there a mirror there? There's a mirror there to see if you're actually doing the exercise correctly. Because if you swing kettlebells incorrectly, which I have done more than once, you will screw up your back. Yeah, <laughs> you know? or, or somebody else's. <laughs> right, exactly. You right. will swing your kettlebell. <laughs> but the point is the mirror is there for you to see what you're actually doing. But in real life, there is no mirror. That's what a coach's job is to do. A coach is going to ask questions. But, it, you know, you got to be super picky on who you hire to be your coach. It's a great analogy, actually. It, you're welcome. And I just <laughs> thought of it while I was standing here. Yep. Because there's a mirror right there. That's good. <laughs> okay. So, but here's the, you know, ask these four questions. I'm going to go these relative quick when you're choosing a coach. Number one, has the coach, has this self-proclaimed coach ever had a real estate license? If they have, you've got to be more particular. Do not hire someone to be your coach who's never sold real estate before. That doesn't even make any sense. I shouldn't even have to say anything more on that one. Number two, if you've got someone who says they're a coach, ask them this next question. Have they sold at least a hundred homes per year? And if they have, well, good. That's probably somebody that at least has proven their ability to be successful at a high level. Now, Next question, have they sold at least 100 homes per year for five years in a row? The reason that that is, question is important is because the agent that sold 100 homes a year, albeit very, you know, congratulations, 
they may have done that because they listed a condo complex or they may have done that because they listed a big, like we have, we know somebody who, um, he develops land, then he lists it himself. And so he'll go, Josh, Mm -hmm. so he'll go and like basically put 800 lots for sale in Arizona. And when he sells them, they all show up under his, you know, you guys get it. So that's good, but it's not the same thing. It doesn't, in our opinion, qualify you to be a great real estate coach. Certainly not. Next question, the one after that is, had you done it successfully? Have you sold over 100 homes per year for at least five years in a row? That really is the litmus test. To be able to be successful at a high level once, great. Five years consistently, that's a different level of, um, frankly, if someone who actually knows how to be a great business person, salesperson, knows how to scale, all those things. They probably have a lot of lessons they can share with you. But here's the thing that hopefully some of you will understand. Just because you are great at playing golf, or just because you are great at screening kettlebells, or just because you're great at something does not mean you know how to teach others to do it. Teaching, and I wouldn't have known this prior to Julie and I being coaches. So we've been coaching agents for over 20 years. We've personally done well over 100,000 paid coaching calls, which is going to be my point number four. I'm here to tell you for sure, learning how to be a great coach, one-on-one coach, not training like what we're doing now, but a one-on-one coach, learning how to do that at the highest level where people are willing to pay you lots and lots of money for long periods of time where you've and essentially earned the right to call yourself a coach is way harder than scaling up a real estate business because Julie and I have sold over a hundred homes our first year in the real estate business. I don't think anyone's ever done it before ever done and many it. many years past that. And many years past that, you know, we sold homes for about 10 years before we became full-time coaches, always between hundred and 200 homes per year. I think there was one year where we closed like 85, but you know, there you go. Um, so the moral of the story is what I'm trying to tell you is the fourth question is what matters the most. So yes, they had a real estate license. Yes, they sold over 100 homes a year. Yes, they even sold over 100 homes a year for five years in a row. But have they actually done over 100,000 paid coaching calls? And if they haven't, then you can do better. Why would you listen to someone who's not performing at the highest level? Why would you listen to someone who's not proven their ability to teach other people to do it? The market has validated them saying, okay, if you've been, if you perform that many paid coaching calls, you obviously know what the hell you're doing or not that many people would have paid you to coach them. You guys get it? It's kind of market tested. Now look for all four of those things. And I'm here to tell you, and this is the truth. There's probably only three or four people in the real estate coaching space amongst the hundreds, maybe even over a thousand people that call them real estate coaches that qualify on all those, on all those criteria. And Julie and I are obviously two of them. All the, there were some more, frankly, 10 years ago, but they all retired. But the moral of the story is, is you have to be super particular who you listen to. And you got to have someone that knows how to teach you how to be successful, no matter what the market direction is going, no matter, you know, essentially what's going on in the economy, all these different things, or you're going to sell yourself short, or you're going to get advice that you're only going to find out was bad advice sometime into the future. And there's an enormous difference between training and coaching. A YouTube coach is not a coach. They're training. Okay. Someone who's, if you ask how many paid coaching calls you've done, you watch you know, if you actually are bold enough to filter all your prospective coaches using those four questions and you ask them the fourth question, you watch how quick they try to obfuscate the answer. Oh, I've, my uh, YouTube channels had, oh, I have over a hundred thousand subscribers or I've just did an event where there were 300 people there, all these types of things. Watch how they do not want to answer the question because I promise you to do over 100,000 paid coaching calls is grueling. <laughs> it's hard. It feels hard we us. used to wake up every morning at 5 a.m. 4.30. And, yeah, four, yeah. Well, yeah, wake up at 4.30 and start coaching around 5 a.m. And we would work every single day uh, like that for, what was six years? Yep. We did. We were, Julie and I really wanted to send ourselves to boot camp and be a Navy SEAL and really know our shit. And that's what we did. Mm-hmm. And then since then, we our coaching business really took off because obviously we helped a lot of people. Nobody's going to be willing to do what we did. I mean, nobody. So look, anyway, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing you, what I, we, we could continue. We but. could continue. All right. Question okay. number. Number 15. Yes or no. Do you have, and here we are again, and use a buyer presentation. It used to be just recommended. Now it's required. Do you have and use a buyer presentation? Evidence that you're doing this and you can say yes, is that your buyers have actually signed with you. Okay. That's how we know you're using the presentation. And all of you who are on the list who've texted the word buyer to 47372, 
Um, I know that we tried to launch the new, uh, you know, the uh, ethical real estate professional designation. I was hoping to have it done about a month ago, but frankly, we just look for, we're seeing more and more ways to make it something that's going to be incredibly powerful for all of you. Um, without talking too much about the ethical real estate uh, professional designation, if you're wanting to be on the list to be invited to be one of your uh, first batch of designees, you have to text the word buyer, B U Y E R, to 47372. That's all I'm going to say about that, but you definitely want to do that. Text the word buyer, B U Y E R, to 47372. Something like 550 of you are already on the list. So when we're ready to launch the program, we're going to have an inaugural uh, webinar. You will all receive a text with the inv uh, invitation to join the event. And yeah, and then we're going to probably allow a hundred of you to be part of the launch group. Julie and I are going to be coaching this ourselves. So it's ethical real estate professional, and it is something all of you absolutely positively want to at least know about. So text the word buyer to 47372. All right. Number 16. If you answer no to this, you can change it starting now. Do you answer your phone 80% of the time when it rings? Do you actually answer it or does everybody go to voicemail all the time so you can screen them? Well, I'm a little embarrassed about that because my literally my voicemail literally says, text me. <laughs> well, but that that's different. You're, you don't have houses for sale or you've got incoming calls and well, you're trying true. to represent your sellers. And, it's different. And, and I was crazy enough years ago to start giving my real cell phone on this podcast. <laughs> that's so, on you. So I get calls constantly. <laughs> exactly. So do you answer your phone 80% of the time when it rings? You'll be amazed at how much more business you do when you actually answer. A little shortcut for that, and you should look into it, is using 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM. Mm -hmm. Um, if you know, we get asked, asked frequently if we were to get back selling real estate full-time, what would we do? And I'll tell you centers of influence and past clients, um, and definitely expired listings, depending on what market we are in. And we'd absolutely use the heck out of 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM. Check that out. It's, I have to say it's probably the most effective way of generating free buyer leads that it's only $35 a month yep. for unlimited leads. So just go to 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM and check it out. All right, number 17, related to that, do you practice furiously fast lead follow-up, calling back leads in less than five minutes if you miss their call? Now, ideally, you're not missing their call, but maybe you're on a listing appointment. Maybe you're doing something with your kid, but you see something comes in, you see their voicemail, you've got to call them back in less than five minutes. Really, it should be less than one minute. I joke with coaching clients, they should barely have hung up at all, leaving you a message and their phone is ringing with you calling them back. Do you know every single agent who's been in the business for more than a blink mm -hmm. can absolutely uh, think of at least a handful of killer leads that came from them answering the phone. hundred percent. They all know that. Yes. If you're having a law in your business, it's because you're hiding from your leads. Didn't you have a coaching client in New York City that answered the phone and it was Bono calling from you too? Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like not his assistant even. Well, no, I, actually there's another one. You had a coaching client. It was yeah. Bono, but you had a coaching client, uh, Sean, in the mm -hmm. desert. Then he'd do a deal with... Um, Sylvester Stallone. Oh yes, Cause, cause yeah, that's right. Because he answered the phone, you yeah. don't know, right? So you got to answer. You got to answer. Oh, by the way, Sylvester was not in his phone book, so it wasn't an identified <laughs> caller. <laughs> right. But definitely answer the phone, yeah. and uh, yeah. So if you're if you're replete of leads, it's probably because you're hiding from the opportunities, and you're trying to force everyone into some you know drip campaign CRM that they don't want to be in. And by the way, not everybody leaves messages. No, they don't. And so. you know, there's a. I'll tell you, this is definitely true in high end. If you don't answer the phone furiously fast, and if it does, if they end up having to leave a message or text you or whatever, if you don't get back to them right away, mm -hmm. that in itself is enough of a decider as to whether or not they're going to do business with That's you. That's right, because you were unavailable when they needed you. Even on the listing side. So yep. what a lot of the high-end sellers will do, because they're sophisticated, mm -hmm. is they're going to check out the agents that they're thinking about interviewing, and they're going to message you, and they're going to see how fast you get back. And if you don't get back fast, you're not going to get the call out. Or if you do, you're already going to have a big black mark against you because of the fact that they know you're crappy with, with lead follow-up. That's true. You know, not every deal comes right from your center of influence. So when people are interviewing other agents, how many times did we hear that? They said, you were the only ones who answered your phone. You were the only ones who called us back. I couldn't believe that you called me back the same day. I called three other agents. Two of them haven't even called me back yet. You'd hear that nonstop. Do you remember what Colette McDonald told you when you first started coaching her in Atlanta, the great Colette? She <laughs> basically said, uh, I was interviewing her for one of our podcasts years ago. And she said, essentially, she, you didn't have to do another coaching call after you basically forced her to start doing furiously fast lead follow-up and, answer, and, her and phone. answer your phone. Right. Cause she, her business just instantly took off instantly because she was so used to frankly hiding from her leads and trying to force them through a funnel, mm -hmm. you know, Oh, I'm trying to qualify all my leads and I'm only going to work with people that are willing to fill out a form. Why the hell are you doing that? 
I mean, honestly. Just ask them questions from the pre-qualification script. Just pre-qualify them. Get on the phone. That's the thing that's going to differentiate you. Not your fancy logo. Exactly. All right, number 18. Do you send five thank you cards or congratulations cards daily? That's something you can easily start doing if you're not already. That can be to past clients, centers of influence. That's a great uh, use of social media because the people in your social media are your center of influence, aren't they? No, that's not a Tim and Julie idea. There's actually been a lot of people over the last forever who have built amazing businesses just on writing thank you cards. Um, you know, there's also kinds of stories and books that are written mm -hmm. about the power of just being the handwritten showing, card by showing overt gratitude. You can really build an amazing life just by being the person who's known to be appreciative. It's quite extraordinary. Yes. I had this discussion with Zoe the other day. Uh -oh. Why if she's having to write thank you cards. <laughs> and she's like, oh, mama, just send him a text. I mean, how many people think that, right? Just, just send him a text. I said, well, you can, but it's a lot more classy and a lot more heartfelt when you write an actual real card. When was the last time you guys got anything written by somebody's hand? Never, right? How much impact would that have if you received a little handwritten thank you card from somebody that, you know, think about that. And you know, here's the funny part. Every single one of you would be emotionally touched. You'd feel, you'd feel so, um, you know, overwhelmed almost depending on what the words were. Correct. Now, when was the last time you did that for somebody? I know the answer is nobody or never. Here we are this time of year. What an unbelievable opportunity for you to actually be writing some, you know, letters of gratitude, gratitude. showing overt appreciation to people. Oh, I'm going to hack that shit, Tim. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to get an auto pin and I'm going to hire some fancy service where they can't tell it's my handwriting. Go for it. But each one of those cards you're going to mail when you're using those fancy services costs 5 bucks, okay? Yeah. So, you do the math on that one. That's 5 That's expensive lazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Isn't that true? I mean, it, it's, it is, be yeah. it's become really expensive to be lazy. It is. Not it's super not just, costly. Right. So, just do it yourself. Yeah, you know, you made me think of something. And I I came across this uh, as I was organizing our books yesterday. I kept uh, the postcard that Delta Crew uh, put on my seat saying, thank you for being a loyal flyer with Delta, right? And I'm sure, like, we don't fly that much, but we do fly with Delta a lot. And I thought, well, that was a really nice touch. And I kept it as a bookmark. Isn't well, that that's true. But you received another <laughs> little nice uh, handwritten note from our mail lady the other day. Yes, that's right. And I'm going to write one back to her and stick it in the mailbox. They're so. going to be like pen pals. I know. It's crazy. So it, 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 do, if, it does go a, a long way. But if we sold real estate here, oh, the mail lady, yes, don't you think she Killer knows? Killer source. If, yeah, you know, She's, <laughs> you know, going to people's houses every day. <laughs> don't you think she knows who's moving? <laughs> Very good point. Okay, so. We could go on. Number 19, do you have and use a listing presentation? Now, I would elaborate on that. Your listing presentation needs to be personal to you, shouldn't be the same one that everybody in your company uses, and you need to use it every time in every situation, even if you're in front of your mom. Do you have and use a listing presentation, and does it work for you? And we've created one for you that you can personalize in Premier Coaching, of course, so make sure you go to premiercoaching.com, and the listing presentation is Again, that's actually our pre our listing presentation um, is, I think, minor leagues compared to the pre-listing pack. Yeah. Because if you're not sending a, a powerful knockout punch pre-listing pack to the sellers prior to going to the appointment after you pre-qualified them, you're not going to take the listing no matter how fancy your listing presentation is, especially if it's a cut and paste from what your broker provided for you. Yeah. And, and again, I'm going to just, this always drives Julie and I crazy. When you talk to the air quoting here, real estate coaches and trainers that say it's normal to take 50% of the appointments Ugh, you go on, I hate that. that is such utter bullshit. I mean, if any of you have gone to school, right? If any of you have kids who've gone to school, are you ever going to say it's okay if they only basically have a 50% success rate? You're not going to the next grade. In what world is losing half the time uh, acceptable? I mean, that's just, it's just astronomical that our industry has such low bars. We tell coaching clients, you have to take 100% of the listing appointments you go on 100% of the time. That is the minimum standard are they going to take 100%? No. They're going to take maybe 9 out of 10, you maybe 8 out of 10. To. But if we told them that it's okay to just take half, they're only going to take probably a third. You guys get it? Good way to starve. Okay. Yes. Number 20, shamelessly self-promoting, but do you listen to this podcast daily? We do this for you guys. And no, we're not your broker. We hope to, for some of you, we are your coaches, your future coaches, but you can at least be listening to this podcast daily. I'm always surprised at how many people still don't listen to podcasts. So if you're listening right now, obviously that's not you. Share it with somebody that you know could benefit from this. We need to all work together to bring up the skill set of the industry. Okay. I wasn't going to say this because I know you'll hold me accountable, Julie. 
So I had somebody on um, Instagram message us and mm-hmm. ask if like you and I are still taking clients. Mm-hmm. And I think you are taking like three personal clients. And my first reaction was, nope, I don't want any clients. <laughs> so I've been, you know, basically focusing on other things other than private clients. But this person said they want me to be their private coach and uh, their private one-on-one coach because it turns out I've coached three of their friends. So I said yes. And then I made, I received messages like that in one flavor or another on a regular basis. I ended up saying yes to five different people. So then I got to thinking about it. So let's, you know, I do want to have a small schedule of personal clients again, because frankly, I love helping you guys in such a direct way. And so I had, you know, I took on one, uh, Dan, Mm -hmm. and the, it it does, it's so massively fulfilling um, to have a coaching client that takes what you say and puts it into immediate effects yes. and comes. Oh, so this is a new coaching client. I'll tell you guys, and I'm not going to use his last name. I told you his first name. So he has not been, he's basically been running his big team for a long period of time. He's been out of the front lines, not working with buyers, not working with sellers. And he wanted to get back in listing houses because just all kinds of different reasons. And he's never been a real uh, scaled up proactively generator, but he's wise enough to note a lot of the passive stuff is very expensive, doesn't work just isn't worth doing, isn't worth doing at the level in which it's hyped up. So he wanted to hire me to be his private one-on-one coaching client. So mm-hmm. true story within two calls, the guys, I got him calling expireds, which most people will never do, but he did not even give me eight ounce of resistance. He starts calling, um, expireds. I'm not making this up. He has uh, listed or see, he, uh, listed a, a expired for 3 million, 3.2. And those people we're able to go into contract uh, and they can, they're pending the sale of their $3.2 million house. You know, it's contingent, but they have already said they'll remove their contingency. And are you ready for this, dear listener? The house they're buying is like, if I remember correctly, 4.1 or 4.3 million, something like that. So just by calling expireds, he's able to essentially knock out, you know, seven, $8 million worth of transactional volume. And he's taking market rate commissions. So he lists another one for 2 million. He lists, you guys get it? And that's in less than a month of calls. Less than a month. And because he, ne- he was coachable. Because well, of your coaching, but because he did something with and it. And do- we're not spending a lot of time talking about all the woo-woo stuff. This isn't life coaching. Not working on his mindset. I'm not trying to be his friend. <laughs> he hired me to help him make money. And yeah. so that's what I'm doing. And we just spent all of our best energies on really making him absolutely lethal and expired. So he comes to our coaching call last week and he asked me, well, Tim, should I start working on Fizbo's or should I start doing this the other? I said, no, you have to make it so that you are so damn good at listing expireds that that's all you ever have to do. Now I will show him how to do other things, of course, but I don't want him hopping from one thing to the next to the next. He's got to be so effective. And so we spent the rest of our coaching call doing uh, role plays and then I asked him as his homework to write down any objections that he heard while setting appointments mm-hmm. that stood in his way of setting an appointment. And I found some very basic, very powerful things that he's now doing. I, you know, and I've been texting him back and we've been communicating that way and giving him actual scripts and strategies. And now he's setting more appointments and he's going to make, I don't even know how much I, I started with him probably a month ago. I wouldn't be surprised if close and pending, he makes over half a million dollars. And that's not even worth a full year's worth of coaching. Also, he didn't pay for any of those leads, did he? No, he didn't. No referral fees. No, he didn't. No bot leads. No, he leads. didn't. Nope. So I'm, I'm looking to take on probably realistically five coaching clients, mm-hmm. but you have to be operating like Dan. I don't want to have to spend a lot of time you know, working on your mindset, to be honest with you, because here's the real moral of the story. Your mindset is going to dramatically improve when your cash flow improves, when you see yourself 100%. becoming successful, when you see yourself doing what you don't want to do, when you don't want to do it at the highest level, when you're the one looking in the mirror and you're seeing the reflection back of the person, you're, you know, you're going to become the person you've always visualized yourself to be. That comes from massive action. So I would love to have five really great Dan, Dan level coaching clients in my life. So if that's of interest to you, text me at 512-758-0206. 512-758-0206. You know the, you, if you listen every day, you know, Julie and I are take, you know, we approach coaching very similar, probably 9% similar, but 10% different. And Julie, what'd you say? Three clients? Yep. So if you're interested in having Julie coach you, you can text me at the same number, 512-758-0206. But do know we're looking for people that are actually ready to get into action and we're not cheap. This is not, yeah. this is not our <laughs> intro level program. This is for people that are actually ready to go to the next level and they, you know, frankly, they can afford us. That's, I'm just being brutally honest. Um, we're, we're highly selective in who we work with. And if you think that's something for you, 
And if you really want to hit the ground running, I promise you, <laughs> we will give you all the education and the motivation, provide you take the action. You'll set yourself up for the best year ever. Next point, Julie Harris. All right. Speaking of Dan, number 21, are you self-generating more leads than you're paying for? You just gave a great demonstration of somebody who's able to self-generate business, right? And it's so funny when we have new coaching clients come and we do the initial, um, the initial consultation the ones that are still paying for leads, it's like a confessional. <laughs> I know. They're they'll embarrassed. Be, they'll be like, I just have to get this out of the way. It's the first thing I want to tell you about because it's been bothering me. I'm still paying for leads and I'm paying this company and that company and this is my spend and I can't wait to get it out of the contract, but I'm afraid to break up with them. So can you just teach me like what you just said about what well, Dan does? Well, I've had some that when I was interviewing people for your schedule mm-hmm. where they basically were kind of cocky. Yeah. And they said, oh, and I want you to know that I'm a Zillow Flex agent or I'm getting buying leads from whoever. Right. And, you know, blah, 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 and I closed five transactions this year from that source. And they're like, OK, you know, screw you, coach. You know, I got then I asked them, OK, what was the referral fee? And they'll tell me. I said, what was your net commission on that transaction? Well, net commission. And then we do the do math <laughs> and they're making like less money than a Starbucks barista makes per hour working with that buyer because they bought the lead because the referral fees that were attached to it. I see guys, I'm not making this up. There are agents out there that are getting their business from Relo and Relo is a great source. Um, but it's not a great source if you're spending 75% depending on your broker for that lead. If the high, if the sale price is high enough and the numbers make sense, adjust accordingly. But for the most part, just because you did a transaction, go you, but really what you want out of your real estate business is net profit. I'll use Dan as an example. When he has the closings and he makes his half million plus this year, his actual pre-tax post-broker payout is going to be damn near half a million dollars. It's going to be something like $475,000. He has no expenses against those transactions. Isn't that extraordinary? You guys should be gearing your mindsets towards making the most amount of profit you can, not just doing deals. And this industry has gotten so bastardized by all of this, you know, ridiculous level of attention on agents doing social. All these, you know, I got all these buyer leads from Instagram and all the rest of it. Okay, great. How many closed? Well, I've closed 15 so far this year. Okay, well, what's the average sale price? What's the average? You know, you guys got to really do the math and think about where you're spending your time and go where other people aren't fishing. And that's going to be doing the proactive lead generation 100%. All right. Yes or no to number 22. Is your business predictable and duplicatable? Or are you relying on luck and referrals? It's yes or no, guys. Number 23, are you actively improving your skills? You know, you can only say yes to this if you can explain exactly how you're improving your skills. Are you role-playing your scripts with a coach? Are you going on appointments that make you a little bit uncomfortable so that you can grow your skill? Only say yes that you're improving your skills if you can tell me how. Number 24, can you name where your next three to five transactions will come from, including the appointment set? Where are they going to come from? Or are you waiting for the market to come to you? Ideally, you have a number of listings on your listings board. You know damn well that your next three to five transactions are coming from those listings selling. See point number three or question number three. Yes. Number 25, do you believe that you will succeed in this business or are you just seeing how it goes? I believe strongly in the agents that are just trying it out, seeing how it goes. I'm going to give it 90 days. I'm going to give it six months. I'll see where I am in the in a year or so. You're not really committed to it. I can tell, and I know you can too, when you talk to coaching clients coming to us or even existing clients, are you going to succeed based on that belief? I think that's like 50% of it. If you are committed, like when we were selling real estate, I don't think we ever really had the thought that it wasn't going to work out. Uh, no, we never did. Like we never even talked about right. that. We never, we never did. It wasn't a thought. There was no plan B in We're place. We're trying it out. Well, matter of fact, you and I had, um, you know, a car cleaning and detailing business. I mean, mm-hmm. Julie and I went to college together, went to high school together, by the way, went to college together and we had a car cleaning and detailing business that we used to pay through our, most of our money or came for paying for college from the car cleaning and detailing business. Well, we got into real estate and we bought our first house when we were 23, did our first real estate deal, obviously then. And then we were like, um, okay, well, that was an interesting transaction. This listing agent who we bought the house from as well did a really, you know, I'm not going to say anything bad because she's passed away. So, but the moral of the story was it was motivation for us to realize there's a huge amount of opportunity in real estate. And indeed there was. So we got real estate licenses in our first year. We sold over a hundred homes. Now, why am I telling you all this? Well, because it was not something we were trying out. I mean, we knew that it was going to work after you really, I I think I worry the most about agents who maybe haven't yet had a deal or two 
and haven't gone through five or six, you know, months. But yeah, I mean, it was going to work out. We didn't even know. Well, yeah, we gave the detailing business away. Yeah, that's how much we believed. We it. burned the ships, and I'll tell you what's more is when our coaching business started to take off after we were, you know, uh, selling real estate for about ten years, mostly by accident, if I'm being honest. But when the coaching business started to take off, we gave the real estate business to my brother. All right, that's, well, that's right. what we did, and we moved. <laughs> and we moved. <laughs> and we, yeah. moved. we, you know, Greener that's pastures. what we did. So uh, that is burning the ships, and that is a great. It's yeah, it's a big risk. It's it took a lot of you know looking back. I'm so grateful for past Tim and Julie for having the gumption. It's a nice word mm-hmm. for having taken those risks and and doing all those things. We're not any particular. We're not smarter necessarily, or taller, or better looking, or no, none of those things. It's just a 100% focus forward. We don't think about the what ifs. We just focus on making something happen. And, and look, selling real estate is one of the greatest industries you could be in because a whole bunch of reasons, but the biggest one is you're selling something that people will always need. You're selling a house, you know, you're selling, everyone always wants to buy or sell real estate. You will not come across a single, single human in the United States that does not want, buy, want to buy or sell a home. If they're leasing, they still want to buy or sell a home. If they own a home, they want to buy another one or you guys get the idea, right? You go to other parts of the world, that's probably true. Uh, as well. But in the United States, you're selling something, a home that every single person wants 350, 340 million humans want to have a home. They want to do a real estate deal. Can you think of something else other than say, for example, toilet paper, you know, water, utilities, or, or water, right. That every single person has to have and wants to have. I can't. And you don't even have to buy it and put it in your personal inventory. Like somebody that owns a grocery store or something like that. Right. You know, there's so many blessings. And I think maybe that's something that we did realize early on. We did. <clears throat> and the freedom of it, I think we really liked. To me, it's more of a risk to be dependent on someone or something else versus being dependent on the work that you can do yourself. To me, that's a higher risk because you can control what you do on well, a daily basis. I, I didn't tell you about this. So my, my friend, okay, you guys will love this story. If you're still listening, you'll love this story. So the first real estate deal that we did, the first listing that we took, we took before we had licenses, okay? And um, our broker's <laughs> wife took the listing, put it her name and transferred it to us when we finally got our licenses. Uh, his name is Carl. And so Carl lived across the street from us and we sort of knew Carl in high school. So we're still friends with him. And uh, he was over at our house yesterday and he, Carl took the very conservative route and worked for basically a company out of France called Orange for his entire life. And, you know, he was comparing, he, he said to me yesterday, I didn't tell you this. Hmm. He said he was like, you know, he's at an age, at a point in his career where he's on the downward slope. There's no big promotions left. He's making the most money he's ever going to make. He's peaked at Orange. He's peaked at Orange. He's probably peaked in his career. Mm-hmm. And by the way, the industry that, that he's in is definitely going to be uh, you know, replaced probably by AI. Right. So he's kind of at the end of his rainbow unless he actually creates mm-hmm. something new and does something more with his life. Mm-hmm. Um, he's done well for himself. He's you know, going to have a nice, I'd say somewhat comfortable retirement. But he asked me, so Tim, how is it that you and Julia are where you are, where we literally came from the same damn street, <laughs> we had the same damn education, we came from the same town, we knew the same people, how is it that you guys are where you are versus me? And I felt kind of sad by him asking me that question. Um, and I had, frankly, I didn't answer his question right away. I went and kind of reviewed with him how exceptionally well he's done with his life and all the things I wanted to, you know, not let him you know, allow himself to feel diminished. And then I answered his question. I said, it's because Julie and I had a greater tolerance for risk. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. We had a greater That's tolerance true. for risk. We didn't want to just jump from feeling secure to feeling secure. And we still feel that way to some extent, not like we did before. So getting into real estate and giving away the detail business, you know, getting into coaching and giving away the real estate business um, or giving. Yeah, I said it right, didn't you I? Did. I think you I did. did. Yeah. yeah. Burning the ships as it goes, right? That's not something very many people would be willing to do. And you don't have to do it either where you're probably going to have to make your greatest leap is stop being so damn comfortable doing the easy stuff, which is the passive stuff. Many of you, all of you have been avoiding doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. I get it. Trust me. I totally understand. Um, but everything you want is on the other side of doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. I'm not suggesting you burn your own ships, but what I am suggesting is you realize that everything you want in life is still in your future. It doesn't matter how old you are. There's so many amazing things you can still accomplish in your life. Don't get all mired up in the politics and the interest rates and that this is and the other things. It doesn't matter. Once you have the skill set, 
if you know, especially with proactive lead generation, you can live wherever the hell you want to live. It's true. You can have whatever lifestyle you want to have. You you don't have to you know be vacationing in Monaco and have a Ferrari if you don't want to. Who cares? You can have a nice, comfortable, paid off life where you only have to sell ten or fifteen houses per year, or maybe only five, and you can do it confidently every day. So the money worries or the financial you know constraints that you have in your life, you chose those for yourself because you are always looking. Acknowledge it, dear listener, always looking for a way to hit in some form the easy button. We're not telling you to do the easy button. We're telling you to do the hard button because so few other people will do it. And that's where you're ultimately going to find your most security. That's right. Be in the top two, three, four percent of people who are licensed to go back to our previous point that, you know, more than half of licensees have yet to sell a house this year. Don't be part of that crowd. Some of them, that's okay. It's just their part-time side hustle. But if that's not why you got your license and you got it so that you would be successful and that you would provide a great lifestyle for yourself and your family, then take action. Be inspired. So yeses and nos. What's the punchline? Yeah, the the punchline is the nos are the things that you've got to work on. Even if sometimes you do it and sometimes you don't, be more consistent about that. For example, if you sometimes send a pre-listing package when only when you know you're competing, but sometimes you don't because you think that you're not. Well, you're having different rules for different people. Let's drill down on that. If you are a premier coaching client and you are doing your version of our, our pre-listing package or you didn't quite understand why what page was put in there or you're trying to modify it or do it your own way and you're starting to accept a lower success rate or not even get as many appointments, uh, you know what to do, right? Use the proven tested system and you're going to get the consistent result. You're going to, a lot of you need to go back to school. You're going to need to challenge yourself. Again, perfect time of year to do it. Turn your nose into yeses. Yes. And stop accepting. Why are you accepting mediocrity in your lives? Why are you accepting mediocrity in your, in the levels of success that you can have? You can change your result. And if you don't want to, you just want to have more security. You can do that as well. Definitely, uh, you know, put the gear down, land the plane, consider becoming a premier coaching client, go to premiercoaching.com or just text the word premier to 47372. So Julie, this was over an hour. I know. Well, we had a lot to say, I guess. And we did exactly the opposite of what we said we'd do at the top of the show. And we said we wouldn't vamp. (laughs) I know. Sorry, guys. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but look, if you want the notes from today's yeah. show, just go to harrisrealestatedaily.com. harrisrealestatedaily.com is our free daily newsletter and it cash, costs you absolutely nothing to uh, subscribe. Just drop in your email and you're off to the races. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com. <laughs> <laughs>